A milestone anniversary as APPA and PIDA present the pet industry's largest annual trade show, the 14th Global Pet Expo. Hi, I'm Tiara Binaldi of Global Pet Expo TV. This is the industry's premier event, featuring all the newest and most innovative products on the market today. Thousands of qualified buyers are registered for this year's show, all here to stock their shelves. The show floor is the place to be. Right as the doors opened, those buyers streamed in to explore 17 football fields worth of pet products. There are more than 3,500 booths and more than 3,000 new product launches covering all pet categories. With so much to see and so much ground to cover, these trolleys crossing the floor all day long can definitely help. Members of the press attended the Global Pet Expo Media Breakfast sponsored by Merrick Pet Care. A leader in pet food and treats for almost 30 years, they're launching a new line of limited ingredient dog food. Two very big milestones this year, APPA is celebrating its 60th anniversary and PIDA its 50th. This year is our 60th anniversary of APPA. Uh, we've been supporting the pet industry since 1958. The association started uh, 60 years ago with 17 members and a trade show that could probably fit in a hotel room. And now we're one of the biggest trade shows in the country and we have 1,300 members, uh, all serving all kinds of uh, products and services for the pet industry. Well, PIDA was formed in 1968 uh, by a small group of distributors that met in Chicago for the first time as a way to um, sort of collectively deal with some of the issues that distributors were uh, dealing with at that time. It was a very early period uh, in the industry's growth. The, the industry obviously was much smaller than it is today, but it was growing very rapidly. So these distributors got together as a way to deal with some of the issues that were facing them collectively and to also um, start to bring more um, uh, trade events like this to the industry. Global Pet Expo is doing something brand new this year you'll want to check out. Mini buyer sessions right here on the show floor. So the first question is, how do you address new products for your business? Lynn Switnowski says the paradigm is shifting as customers have more access to information. Retailers need to listen to their customers by engaging in a dialogue and staying ahead of the trends in the industry. There are trends within these new products behind me that are going on. Manufacturers are creating them. Ask yourself on a 30,000 foot level, how is your store addressing these trends? Another first-time buyer seminar was held in the middle of the aquatic lounge. Attendees learned how to choose the right aquarium plants. Stay easy in the beginning. Start with a few varieties. Start with the bulletproof varieties like Anubias and some cryptocreens, Java fern. Real easy to grow plants. It'll take low to medium light. That'll get your customers off on the right foot. They'll be successful in the beginning. And then you can go with more advanced varieties. What I like to tell people to think about with the aquarium plants is think of it like your garden and your landscaping outside. They need the same ba basic things, so you're gonna give them fertilizer every once in a while. They need lighting, and you also need to do some pruning to keep them in shape. You can also take advantage of academy seminars. Candice Doniolo talked with retailers about online competition. She says in order to stop losing customers to the internet, retailers need to do a better job investing in equipment that tracks data. My number one recommendation is to get a good point of sale system. It's, a, it's Some of them are expensive. They're a big investment, but it's an investment in you. And spending that money on a good point of sale, not a glorified POS, like sometimes the Squares or Shopify's, those don't have a lot of data for you to look at. So investing in a point of sale is top priority. Back to the busy show floor, and we just had to show you this. Time to grab a latte, but take a closer look. A barista is personalizing coffee foam with your own pet's face. How cool is that? Or should I say how hot? Stop by booth 4458. Your personalized artwork will take just five to six minutes. 
Right after the show, attendees had time to make connections and strengthen existing relationships at the pet working reception where the Committee for the Rapid Advancement of Pets was introduced. It was launched, seven committee members, all pets. They're sitting around a boardroom table and they're trying to find their next stunt of how they're gonna make pet ownership uh, exciting and make people excited about pets and coming up with the next coolest idea that will be an internet sensation. Time for our committee to step out of the shadows. You're insane, Gwendolyn. What if people find out that we've secretly been keeping pets at the center of pop culture for decades? That's gonna do it for this edition of Global Pet Expo TV. I'm Tierra Binaldi. Be sure to use the Global Pet Expo app for all the show information and to keep up with the schedule. Thursday show hours are from 9 to 6, and be sure not to miss the new product showcase awards presentation at 5 p.m. Friday show hours are 9 to 5, and don't miss Shema Hyder, the guest speaker at the APPA Professional Women's Networking Breakfast at 7.30 a.m.